You don't have to close your eyes, but imagine with me for just a moment. Think about the very best moments in your life. What were you doing? How did you feel? Who were you with? For the young folks, did you think about calling family or friends with that great news that you got into that school or got that new gig? For the OGs, did you think about those milestones with your children, their births, first steps, first day of school? And for the elders, I hope you thought about blowing raspberries with your grandbabies. When we really think about it, the best parts of life, the moments we come back to when reminiscing, are centered around people. Today, I'll tell you how to manufacture more of these moments and more of the relationships that make them possible. Today, I'm pushing people. Calling your parents once a month is not P. In fall 2016, I moved from Bolingbrook, Illinois to Atlanta, Georgia to begin my studies at Morehouse College. In that first semester, I hit the ground running. I was getting my routine together. I was putting in major study hours. And I was jumping into clubs and other extracurriculars. Morehouse, a private school in Atlanta, attracts students from all over the country, some select parts of the world, and many from below the Mason-Dixon. In that first semester, I noticed classmates packing up what seemed like every other weekend to visit home. And first year Jared couldn't believe it. He thought visits outside the holidays were distractions. Homesickness was a weakness. And one trip to see here folks meant complete dependence. Looking back, this entrenched me into trying to be independent to a fault. It was the first sign that I was missing something. Now, the brother I had the privilege of trying to share room 406 in Graves Hall with was David Dave Jeffries, the first person I met at Admitted Students Weekend six months earlier, my partner in crime during the pre-freshman program three weeks earlier, and my current best friend. A little bit more about Dave. He is the funniest person that I know. He's loyal with a capital L. He's the one you go with to lean on when you're under the gun. He's a family man, a brother, son, and uncle, and he can befriend anyone. Yeah, sometimes we fought like 10-year-old brothers without adult supervision, but living with Dave showed me, even more clearly than my classmates, that I was missing something. I began to see that this man Dave was better than me at things that I didn't even know existed. When it came to people, Dave was really him. Now at 18, my rebellious phase didn't look like sneaking out and partying. Instead, it looked like me trying to be hard. While I saw Dave calling his moms once, sometimes twice a day, I was calling my parents once a month. And that was in a good stretch. I was the worst. This is a sick Negro. I was a sick Negro. Worse than just failing to connect with loved ones who I had no real beef with. I was slightly proud of my streak and my independence. I told myself I didn't have the time. I thought not needing my parents made me tough. I was satisfied with the status quo of my relationships and ultimately, I was satisfied with my conventional success. But at least I was humble enough to recognize that I had some things I could learn from Dave. And after a couple of years of seeing the separation between Dave and I when it came to relationship skills, I decided it was time for a change. Prioritizing your profession is not P. All that grinding my first two years got me into the positions that I wanted. In the summer of 2018, a few weeks into a great professional opportunity that I had worked hard for, I quickly figured out the job was not fulfilling for me. In spending that much time doing something I didn't like made it so easy to want to change my values. And as any good student does, I got into the lab and I studied. I was reading the books. I learned about these things called love languages. I even asked my friends for feedback. And here's what I learned. First, 
peer-reviewed scientific research says relationships above all else have the largest impact on our health. Second, we can reverse engineer how to live from the beginning of our lives if we learn from the regrets of those at the end of their lives. Two of the top five regrets of the dying are, I wish I hadn't worked so hard, and I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. Because time is a limited resource, these regrets are really two sides of the same coin. We can at least avoid regret and at best live a life of fulfillment if we value and choose relationships over career. Last, relationships give adjacent things meaning. Experiences are enhanced by the people we enjoy them with. Time with the right people can make shooting the breeze just as fulfilling as the most intricately planned getaway. Even material things mean more when we share them with people. Now, I'm not saying that profession is not important at all. I stand here today having put many hours into professional pursuits. However, what I am saying is we must give serious consideration to how we prioritize our relationships. Remember, you can only have one priority. So overall, my last two years at Morehouse, I thought I had it figured out. But belief without action is not P. So by this point, I had shifted my mindset around growing more in my relationships. I had read the books. I told everyone, this is the new Jared. And to their surprise, I started calling my parents more. Now, me and my friends like to say, sometimes life, school or the work grind, family emergencies, money problems, health, can put you in the blender. And in the summer of 2020, I packed up my belongings into four suitcases in Atlanta and moved to New York to start my first semester at Columbia. Most of y'all can relate, fall 2020 was a precarious time and an uncertain time. For me, I was going to class online, which meant the typical ways of interacting no longer worked or no longer available. I was away from my inner circle of friends for the first time. And most importantly, I experienced not the first, but the most serious health issue with a family member in my entire life. Midway through that first semester, I got a text saying that Grammy had been admitted into the hospital and things were not looking good. I was told to make my final remarks to her and I struggled to make a video saying how grateful I was for her. I was in the blender. I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. <laughs> <laughs> I was so cooked, I didn't even tell my best friend Dave. All the reading did not prepare me to share my final thoughts, my final words with my grandmother through a three by five screen. Now, thankfully, Grammy recovered and I started getting out more in my second semester. But boy, I had learned my lesson. I had got the message. I've been known life is fragile, but now, I had the motivation to not eliminate, but insulate myself from the pressures of life by staying well connected. I believed in not taking people for granted, but what was I doing to celebrate and spend time with my grandmothers? I knew the cure to separation loneliness was to just link my friends, but how many times was I calling them? How many trips did I have on the calendar a year to see them? I had come a long way from my first year at Morehouse, but I realized I could get just a little bit more like Dave if I acted on my values. I realized that just realizing relationships are the new rich without doing anything, it ain't gonna work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it ain't gonna, mm, nah, nah, it ain't gonna work. So hopefully you don't have to get put in the blender to realize relationships are the new rich. But even if you do, how do you act on that belief? Here's some things you can start doing today to improve your relationships. Sharing your gratitude is P. Each day, write down someone that you are grateful for. 
This allows you to be reflective and gives you an opportunity to express words of affirmation to your people. Picking up the phone is P. Each week, pick up the phone and call someone you want to improve your relationship with. At a minimum, this shows that person that you care about your relationship. And at best, it gives you another opportunity to deepen it. Here's how it works for me. Back in February, I called my Morehouse brother, Anthony. We're classmates, we studied abroad together, but I wanna improve our relationship. So I called him just to chop it up. After that call, I got an invite to his graduation kickback where I met a new friend. I got invited to that friend's birthday party. Got an intro to another friend. Made my first trip to Houston, actually, with those new friends. Had the opportunity to help Anthony as he transitioned to Washington, D.C. And finally, I got Anthony's help with editing my first photo book, which is available for pre-order today all because I called him back in February. Giving gifts is P. Each month, give a gift to someone, and not just because it's a holiday or it falls on a birthday. Gifts are one of the best ways to practice generosity and selflessness. And there's nothing quite like the smile that you can put on someone's face from getting them a gift that they really like. Planning trips is P. Once a year, plan an experience, trip, or visit with someone. These break us out of our routine and force us to intentionally spend time with our people. This is not for IG. You don't have to go around the world. Go down the street as long as it breaks you and someone else out of the blender. Relocating for relationships is definitely P. At one point in your life, make a decision to move not for your career, but for your relationships. This is the highest leverage thing that you can do because it exponentially increases how often you can see and spend time with your people. When I graduated from Columbia, I had the choice to move to Houston to be close to work or DC to be close to my friend, Jamie Floyd. Everyone wanted to know what I would do if I didn't move in with Jamie. I guess we'll never know. For the folks who are ready to get active, I write more about these advanced tactics at jaredsbryson.com. As you work to improve your relationships each day, week, month, year, and throughout your life, remember the spirit in which you should be putting in this work. The late bell hook says, I try daily to learn to leave folks as though we might be never meeting again. This practice makes us change how we talk and interact. It is a way to live consciously. And speaking of living consciously, one last thing. This past Tuesday, I got another text saying my other grandmother was not doing too well. And as I was leaving the airport yesterday to come here, I got the call that grandma had passed away peacefully. Though we will never meet again, I'm grateful to have been able to spend time consciously with her this past Christmas and in this past year and a half. To Claudette Stinson Bryson, AKA grandma, I'm grateful to have shared a love of music. I'm grateful to have learned to document life from a memory capturing master. And I'm grateful to have always witnessed you pushing people. Thank you.